Hey guys, it seems the troubleshooting fun just never ends with this Admiral chassis. If you recall, I just replaced a handful of components in this set worked fairly well. Uh, so so much so that I figured, well, uh, maybe I'll just put this in one of my cabinets that I haven't restored the chassis for yet. So before I wanted to do that, I wanted to make it more reliable, so I replaced all those nasty, oozing old paper caps. And the set still worked pretty much the same. And then I went through and replaced the electrolytics and the out-of-spec resistors. And now, <laughs> I think I've created, well, I know I've created some more problems. If you recall, last time we left off with this set, I was mentioning that there's waviness on the right-hand side, especially if I turn the contrast up high. And I thought maybe if I replace the electrolytics, especially in this little network here, which is what generates a slight negative voltage for the contrast and AGC bus. Well, I did all that, and there's no ripple. Uh, but now the contrast issue is much, much worse. Right? Look how bad that picture is twisting. And uh, before, if I backed off the contrast, I'd get a decent enough picture. Now that's really impossible. There's another issue is the uh, brightness. It used to be if I turn the brightness and contrast all the way down, the picture was black. In fact, I'd have to turn the contrast up probably about a third or a halfway before the picture would get lighter. Now if I put them both down all the way, there's still illumination on the CRT. And the way they say to adjust the contrast and brightness, contrast all the way down and turn up the brightness till you just start to see a glow and then turn the contrast up. So it seems like with, a, with these both all the way down, I've got too much brightness, too much contrast, or both. So, and this is probably the most watchable image I can get. You see, it's got this waviness over here. And, of course, retrace lines. And if I turn either control up anymore, things just get worse. So, something's got to be overdriven somewhere. Something else I want to tackle, too, is that the set has too much width. Now, the other admirals are restored. That's because... A big power resistor, and down inside there, which you probably can't see, was open. Well, I've replaced that, which did shrink the width a bit, but it's still much too wide. It should be, oh, probably a good 10% less wide. Now, there is a width control on the back, which I can try adjusting. I don't know if it'll have quite so much range, but I can give that a try. At any rate, I have got some problems. Um... So, I've checked all the resistors. I can double check them, but I've gone over them a couple times now. So I guess I have to double check them. Um, perhaps a tube has developed a fault. I've seen that before. Uh, these are pretty much all the tubes the set came with, which all checked pretty good, but one could have developed a uh, some leakage or a short, which could very well present something like this, like a heater cathode short. In one of the video IF tubes could be overdriving things. Uh, another thing I'm a little suspicious of is the brightness control. It has a 220K resistor on one side and a 22 on the other to sort of limit the range of the control. Well, that 220K was measuring closer to 400. I replaced it with a 220, so that might have affected things. This brightness control might be a little out of whack. Otherwise, there's not much to it. It just controls uh, the bias on the cathode. So it's just simple three resistors in series with variable control and a little 0.5 microfarad cap there to filter out any noise. The same with this electrolytic here. It's just to get a nice, clean, stable, uh, adjustable DC voltage to the cathode. Uh, but I'll certainly check that. Now, they don't specify what the range should be. Um, so it's a little hard to say for sure. Uh, it might be in the uh, voltage resistance chart though. Sometimes when uh, the voltage is variable, they might give you a range. 
Uh, no. <laughs> uh, oh well, I think that's pin 10, right? Uh, pin 11. 20 volts DC, well that's got to be just a typical or average value. Uh, some of these power resistors are pretty far off too, like that 15K was measuring uh, way off like uh, 25k and that's that guy right there which is in the resistor network that develops voltage that goes over the brightness control so that might have thrown things off so in other words by putting all these components like back into spec I think I've thrown things out of whack and I've heard guys caution about this there's a term called over restoring uh, it doesn't mean anything's necessarily bad, it just means perhaps that uh, things were adjusted uh, and tweaked uh, to, as the set kind of aged to keep everything functioning well. Well, now that I've put all these new parts in there, I've kind of jolted things back to where voltages are at the full spec, and now I've got to make adjustments. Uh, like there are other things I can adjust, like mechanical, like this um, focus electromagnet. I think I've already adjusted the ion trap, and I have not touched the uh, horizontal drive control, which has some impact on the width and horizontal linearity and uh, high voltage. And I mentioned there's a width control inside the high voltage box. There's a linearity control down uh, here. Which I have not touched. And then of course there's aligning the whole set. So the first thing I'm going to do is spot check some voltages and perhaps the resistances going off of this chart. And then I'll start going through the procedures they have outlined in here about how to adjust um, things like uh, the drive and this horizontal sync lock control and then uh, do an alignment and Hopefully that will take care of things. It's a little frustrating, like uh, one step forward, two steps back with this set. Right away I found something odd with the brightness control. They show on the voltage chart it's about 20 volts. And it says that's what front panel control is set at maximum. Alright, well if I do the brightness at maximum... I get about 6.2, let's say, round up. What's also odd is when if I start backing it off, the voltage will go up to about 8 volts, and then it starts dropping off again, and eventually goes all the way down to 0.6. You notice on the screen, too, that it'll get brighter and brighter, and as I continue going towards maximum, it starts getting a little bit dimmer, too. Uh, so peak brightness. In other words, peak brightness is when this is at the highest voltage, and then it drops off. Well, that seems a little odd. So, I will check those resistors, that potentiometer, and what it is attached to. So... When I replace the electrolytics, I might have gotten that 20 microfarad wrong. Or, as I was saying, replacing that 15K, which had drifted so far off value, I may have screwed up this voltage divider network. I don't know, but uh, I will investigate. Okay, this is one of the stranger things I've encountered lately. I disconnected everything from that brightness control and it measured about 90k. It's supposed to be 100k, 90k, pretty close. Put the ohmmeter on the wiper to either leg, rotated it. It seemed to travel nice and smooth from 0 up to about 90k. And I checked the resistors on either side at 22k to 20k. They measured okay. So right now I've reconnected the ones in the outer legs, and I disconnected the center wiper, which is going to the cathode and the CRT, just to take that out of the equation. So right now, all we've got is this. 220K going to about 300 volts, 100K potentiometer, 
and a 22k resistor going to ground so just your standard old voltage divider so with about 300 volts up at the top and about 122k in the bottom leg I would expect that joint there between a 220k and a pot to be a hundred and something volts well when I check it so at the top leg of the 220k you got about 300 volts at the juncture of that resistor and the pot we have 0.4 volts <laughs> and at the 222k and the other uh, side of the pot we've got almost nothing so what the heck is going on? Where is all that voltage going? Why is the drop across this resistor uh, almost uh, complete? Uh, almost all the 300 volts is dropping across that resistor. Why is there nothing left across that pot in that resistor? I checked the resistance between this point and ground. Uh, I've got significant resistance, so I am quite puzzled right now. And uh, if I turn the set off, it shows voltages drop down. Yeah. Uh, this resistor is getting a bit warm. Uh, I'm not sure how much watts, wattage that would be. Would it be 1 milliamp, I think? About 300 volts into, say, 300K. Uh, be a third of a watt, I think. Anyways, um, I, <laughs> I'm kind of at a loss as to explain why all the voltage is being dropped across that resistor, not dividing between each of these three resistances. Uh, all I can figure is something funky has happened when there's a voltage applied and something's breaking down somewhere. I'll try the simplest thing first, which is to replace this tw the 22K and the 220K and uh, see what's what. Let's see if that makes any difference. Alright, enough screwing around with this control. There really does appear to be something wrong with the brightness pot. I've gotten some weird intermittent readings the more I've played with it, so I am just going to replace it. I went up to the attic where I luckily have some parts chassis and I pulled an identical control out of one of them. So it'll just be a matter of swapping out the two. Oh, and I'll test this before I do just to save myself a potential headache. Okay, I have replaced the brightness and the contrast control. Set is turned on right now. Both controls down to minimum and a blank screen. That's actually what I want to see. Now I will start increasing the brightness. And when I just start to see an image, like right there, and then you just start turning the contrast up. All right, good. That's about how I had it before. So straight edge along this side. That's how it's supposed to be. Now if I crank the contrast up, it will start getting wavy, like before but I can turn it down and off it's a decent picture so still not 100% happy with the way the brightness and contrast works but also keep in mind this CRT is fairly weak which I think is why it's turned this brightness up so much before I start seeing anything so right now it's up all the way remember this was just uh, kind of uh, barely into the green when I tested it so even though this is a replacement 56 this set I'm sure saw a lot of use uh, so, alright, next thing I want to do is see if I can get this width down. There is a width control in the back of the set, but I can't get at it too easily right now, so I'm going to see if I can rejigger these chassis on my workbench a little bit. And if I can't... I just finished going through the alignment procedure. Same techniques I've shown you guys before. Use my modified Suncor VA62 and a VTVM and peak the various coils. So here's what I got for the frequency response, which is pretty darn good. It's, it's typical of this series of Admiral chassis. So Each of these sections is another one of these frequencies. Color carrier 3.5, that's where you get the chroma dots. 
and then after that we've got 4 and 4.5. If you can see vertical lines into 4 and 4.5, you've got a really good frequency response. Later black and white sets were intentionally limited so the color info wouldn't mess up the picture, so they were down to typically about 3 megahertz of bandwidth. That's why I like these really early black and white sets. You get a really sharp picture if they are adjusted right. So what I'm working on now is centering the picture and getting the linearity squared away. So that's a little bit weird in that it focuses really sharp in the middle but not on the edges. And the linearity is a little bit goofy too, maybe a little bit of pin cushioning too. I, I think all that stuff is mechanical. Remember this is not the original picture tube. Uh, so, the mechanical stuff is here, so to center it, there are four spring-loaded screws around this focus coil. I want to shift this picture over to the left a little bit, so I need to tighten or loosen those screws to do so. And as far as the focusing, I want to make sure that this yoke is pushed up as far forward as it can possibly go. You can do that by loosening up this wing nut and making sure that it's pushed forward. That's also how you adjust the picture if it's twisted left or right. When you loosen this up you can slide the yoke forward and back and twist it left and right. And uh, you know, and the CRT is also a bit on the weak side so that could be affecting the focus a bit too. But even as it is, this is not bad. Not bad at all. The set's playing fairly well, but I've still got a few remaining nagging issues. One is I've still got some twistiness on the right-hand side. Also, there's some waviness here, but I think that is because I don't have the cover on the high-voltage cage. So, I'll try that out now. I'll have to rig up a, a better power cord because the original shoot-up one is still uh, attached to it. What I find curious about this right hand edge is if I turn to just some static, the uh, raster goes way off to the right, much further than when there's a signal. So I'm not quite sure why that would be. I mean, that's where the horizontal sync pulse comes in and tells this, this set to switch over to the other side. Uh, and I think that typically the width, with or without a signal, is the same, but uh, I could be mistaken about that. Alright, so the next thing up I'll do is get that high voltage cover on there. Let's see if that clears up some of these issues. Here's the one that came with the set, and you can see it's got the remains of power cord on there, so if I put this cover on, I can't plug it in, so. I can hunt around for another one uh, that's got a good power cord, or I can uh, cut this one out. It's kind of rusty though, so I'll see if I've got any that are in better condition before I bother trying to do anything with this one. I've got some spares over here. Other sets, and nope, they've all got the same issue. Oh, this one's in much better shape. Less rust than was the original stickers, but same deal. Dead power cord. There's another one, quite a bit rustier, and uh, an even worse condition power cord. So, of these three that I have to choose from, I think this is the winner. All right, here's the new high voltage cage cover installed. After picking out the remains of the old power cord, I installed a new one by heating it up with a heat gun and mushing it over the brass rivets there, so nice and solid. Now I'll fire it up one last time on the workbench, and if all is well, I will install this in a cabinet. 
This is the set that I'm going to put that 30B1 chassis in for now. Really, this is a 30A1 series set. And the set that that one came out of is very similar looking. It's a blonde set as well, but it had a CRT mask more like this. Plastic, double D. What they call it, they call these double D because it looks like two D's back to back. Versus this, which we call a rounded rectangular mask. Otherwise, very, very similar. Got this set a few years ago, and I really like it. It's one of the few blonde sets I have. It's a limed oak finish. Really, this is a red oak. It has some layers of finish on it, which I can see. Kind of do a little detective work here where it's worn through. And if you look close, like right here, it's pretty much down to the bare red oak. Then there's kind of a whitewash layer that makes it sort of pinkish. And then there's sort of a yellowish. It's kind of an amber tinted lacquer that was put over that. A tragic thing about this set, I mean, it's in pretty good shape. Original decals are real nice, got all the knobs, nice grill cloth and all that. But I don't know what happened here. The seller had no idea, but it's got two big old chomps taken out of it. Now, if this was a more conventional finish like mahogany or walnut veneer, I might just slice off an inch back here, put on some new veneer, and uh, refinish it. But this is a rather difficult finish to replicate, so that's why I haven't touched this in a few years that I've had this set. What I think I'm going to attempt to do, because it's the least destructive thing, well, one, I can do what I've been doing now and just put like a radio or a cloth over it so you don't see it. But two, uh, what I think I'll do is build up these missing layers of lamination, like plywood here, and some of the layers are gone. And, and then simply use some artist acrylic water-based paints. I can mix up to various colors. First, I'll try to find the, the lightest color, basically like a yellow ochre, paint over that, and then just uh, slowly take my time. Use various uh, you know, shades of uh, yellowish, tannish color and kind of try to paint out the grain lines to bridge the gap here and then clear coat it. But that's for another day. What I want to do now is get these chassis out. So I was just saying this set's in good shape, it even has the original back. And this thing is nasty. It's in, it's in nice original condition, but. Uh, it has some of the worst green cadmium corrosion I've ever seen. Not on the bottom chassis so much. It was nice. It was rather rust-free. I got this set in uh, northwest Indiana. Uh, but the upper chassis, ah, <laughs> uh, man, whatever environment it was in. Well, let's see. Northwest Indiana is known for its oil refineries. So maybe there's a lot of sulfur in the air, and it's, I think the greenish, yellowish stuff is cadmium sulfide, so maybe that had something to do with it. But otherwise, got the original back, the decals are all in nice shape. I think the CRT is pretty good too, but I have never touched this chassis. So I'm certainly not going to part it out, but uh, I, know, I was just thinking since I got a, a chassis that's working fairly well, this is a place to put it for the time being, so I'll take off this back. Pop these two chassis off, put the 30B1 in here, and fire it up for one last look. And then I want to get my GE810 chassis up on the workbench and finish that guy off for the second time, I guess you could say. Here's the original chassis out of that blonde set. And you can see how green it is. It's been a while since I looked at this, so quick peek underneath the chassis before I, I guess I'll stash this away up in the attic for now. Oh yeah, same old, same old. I wouldn't torture you guys with another restoration on one of these right away. I got way too many other things to do, including clear off as many unfinished projects as I can before Wednesday when a little surprise is going to show up. And no, it's not another set that I bought. I'm going to do a little side project for somebody else. Nice. Alright, so let's get this out of here. I'll wash my hands. Get that 
she had me dust off of them. And then put the new chassis in the cabinets. I finished installing the 30B1 in this blonde cabinet, fired it up to my analog cable system, and the sound is fantastic. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe I should never have asked you to come here. Why did you say that? Booming volume. Maybe I should go away. Which is funny considering how poor it was with the over the air converter box. But unfortunately, I got two issues. One, fine tuning on this channel for the best sound. I got it at the far right extreme. And with the chassis in this cabinet, I cannot get my alignment tool in here to adjust the tuning slug even if I pull the knobs off. So. If I want to keep it hooked up this way and get the best picture and sound, I'm going to have to uh, pull the chassis out. And two, uh, still fighting with that issue on the side. Memory foam is known for its uncompromised comfort and support, but it can be hot to sleep on, causing you to toss and turn. Now, but for now, it's good enough. I'll play this periodically over the next few days or weeks and see how it holds up. And uh, then when I clear off some other projects, I'll pull this back out and give another going over. With a little bit so that the picture would fill the cabinet opening better. And uh, yeah, it's not too bad in the end. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at restoring an Admiral 30 B1 chassis. Hey, George! Uh, who's this? I see this is Maria Tarnovsky. Oh, Maria Tarnovsky. Yeah, she's been in Well, I thought this was going to be the final installment on this project, but unfortunately after about 30 minutes of running this set, the vertical went nuts. Adjusting the vertical hold control does nothing. So I'm going to have to pull this chassis back out, but not tonight. I'll save that maybe for tomorrow night. It could be that one of the tubes went out. Maybe one of the replacement caps went out. One of the old carbon comps went out. Maybe the vertical hold control potentiometer. I don't know, but I'm hoping it'll be fairly obvious and a fairly quick fix.